Folks, welcome back. I have your latest home prices and insights for the City of Toronto for a week ending May 5th. There is so much misinformation out there when it comes to real estate. Before I get into the numbers, that's what I'm going to talk to you about first. Misinformation in Toronto real estate. So I've, I've got my cheat sheets here. Through the, during the course of the week, I've been jotting down all the, the, the craziness I, I, I've been hearing. And it's, it's unbelievable the amount of misinformation from, from, well, from everybody, from people in the media, from other realtors, from, from your neighbor that, that maybe you value their opinion. It's, it's unbelievable how much misinformation. So let's start with, I, I, by now you must have heard, CMHC has come out with their new predictions. Now, CMHC is considered an authority figure for, for, for many people. If you're a foreign investor and you're looking to invest in the Canadian real estate, you're going to CMHC's website and you're trying to get a feel with what's going for what's going on in the Canadian real estate. Well, last year they said prices were going to come down 18 percent well they were nowhere near it if we go back to the previous year they're more wrong than they are right and and i i don't know what the thing is some of these economists i don't know if they gotta feel they gotta justify their job but what they've done this time not only have they predicted that sales uh, that sales prices are going up but they predicted to 2023 <laughs> I gotta laugh because I, I I can't look past the next four or five weeks to tell you what's going on going on in real estate because the market can go one way or another so quickly. There's so many unknowns out there, but somehow these guys have predicted that here's what's going to happen in 2023. So that kind of bugs me how these guys CMHC can predict a 2023. So there's that. If you listen to any of the TREB news, the news that comes out from the Toronto Real Estate Board, you know it's going to be slanted positive for real estate. No matter what's happening, there's going to be a positive slant on it, so you should know that. I've been hearing, uh, there's so many clickbait headlines over the last few weeks with how much better we're doing this year. Well, they're comparing a, a very, very strong market this year to a completely almost dead market last year at this time through the through the this whole health crisis and and they're talking you, you're hearing headlines like you know sales are up 33 percent prices are up 33 percent or whatever the number is it, it's just clickbait it's not it's it's not real uh, I've <laughs> I've heard somebody in the news say um, and, and this is somebody that I know a lot of people listen to say well there's there's so many homes being sold, there's sellers, and, and those sellers kind of got to buy, so there's kind of the same amount of sellers that there are buyers, so we're in a balanced market. Craziest thing I ever heard. More crazy talk? We're kind of in a little bit of a, uh, of a I, I, I don't want to say the word lull because it kind of gives the impression that we're, we're, we're way down. Uh, I don't know how people take that, but you know, so let's just say we've kind of plateaued so instead of 80 percent of home selling at list price or more there's maybe 70 or instead of 70 there's like 60 so it's a little bit calmer right now so I've got a, a prominent person in a news saying that we're in a buyer's market now nothing could be further from the truth and I'll show you in a while when we get the months of inventory it's a very strong seller's market still it, it's just crazy I heard somebody saying condos are on fire and this guy's in the news all the time condos are on fire where if, are they talking one building because yeah i can see that and i've seen some buildings are just on fire but if we're talking about the market in general if we're talking about just the city of toronto no so there's so much misinformation out there and and just be careful where you're getting the news be careful 
if, if use some logic maybe if these things kind of make sense and and just be careful where you're getting the news that's all I'm gonna say be careful where you're getting your news the numbers I'm talking to you about I'm gonna get into it right now thanks for being patient and listening to me through all this these already happen I'm not like I'm not talking about next week or the week after I'm talking about what's already happened and and truth be told I even see some people get these numbers wrong. So let's get right into it. What's happening in the city of Toronto? I have detached properties here for week ending May 5th. We sold 293 detached homes last week, down slightly. So I'm saying down, but it's slightly. And if we look at basically the last four or five weeks, except for, well, the last four weeks, we've kind of been around the same number. So. It, you know, it, it, they don't have to be exactly the same every single week, but between 293 and, two, and 309 and 297, it's kind of the same number. Average sole price has, has gone up a little bit to 1693000 So it's gone up from one week to the next. The previous week it came down. If we kind of look back over the last four or five weeks, average sole prices kind of been around 1.7 for the average detached home in the city of Toronto. If we go back to the beginning of the year or we go back to, <clears throat> excuse me, November, December last year, we're way up from there. So average sole price over the last several months for detached, yes, has been increasing. But for the last few weeks, the last couple months, it's been pretty steady. And that's kind of the, the plateau that I'm talking about. And, and so, you know, take that how you will, but that's what has already happened. The amount of detached selling at $2 million or more is 71, up slightly from the previous week, but a little bit lower from where it was last month uh, in, in March. Well, actually two months ago now. Compared to last year, we can't. We, I, I, I just, I, I, it's not in me to actually look at last year's prices at this time. In another month or so, we'll be out of where we were last year and we can more, more accurately compare and get a, a feel for it. But we're way ahead of where we were last year. But that's, that's no special feat. Like we locked the country down or the city down last year at this time. Okay, so when we look at sales, 293. 71% of those sold at list price or more. So it's still very competitive. Now 71% is down slightly from where it's been the last few months. It's down, you know, five, six, nine percent from where it's been. So is it better? Of course it is. If you're looking to buy, you have a few more opportunities, but a few. It's not like all of a sudden you can take your time on every property. As remember, 71% are still selling at list price or more. Looking at listings, listings are up slightly from the previous week. We listed 520 detached properties last week and 520, except for a couple of weeks here in April, 520 is, is one of our, our, our higher weeks going back for several months. And months of uh, and active listings has come down slightly to 1,145. Now, let me just talk about active listings real quick. Active listings means at midnight of May 5th, at the end of this weekly cycle, how many properties are actually available for sale? So, if a property was listed and then sold, it's no longer available for sale. How many are available for sale? So the amount of listings for sure plays into it, but also properties that never sold from the previous week or the previous month that are on the market add to active listings. So it's, it's, there's a formula there and, and, and it, you've got to kind of know the math to be able to calculate what active listings is. Months of inventory is sitting at 0.9. So we have less than one month of inventory when it comes to detached homes. It's a very aggressive seller's market. Now, there are characteristics to the different markets. So if we were in a buyer's market, that's over six months of inventory, and typically in a buyer's market, 
There's much more supply than there is demand and prices tend to be coming down. In a balanced market, it's kind of even like the word suggests balanced market and prices are pretty steady. In a seller's market, prices tend to be going up because demand outweighs supply. There's just not enough inventory out there and, and lots of people want to buy the few properties that are available for sale. So there's less than one month of inventory. It's an aggressive seller's market. There might be some relief from where it was maybe a little while ago where you know 80% were selling a list price or more, but it's still 71% selling a list price or more. It's a little bit calmer. Certain pockets behaving a bit differently but it is very much still a seller's market. Let's look at semis. We have half a month of inventory. Prices came down a little bit to 1,351,000. Doesn't really mean that prices of semis have come down. There's only 119 sold, so depending on which ones are being bought and sold, kind of changes the average price to a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but that's high, you know, you're talking about a semi, 1,350,000, the week before 1,383,000, it can't always be going up and up and up. But at half a month of inventory and 81% selling at list price or more, expect prices to stay high. There's really no relief when it comes to, to semis. Townhouses, 0.6 months of inventory, very low. 74% selling at list price or more. There was only 43 townhouses sold in all of the city of Toronto. Now these are freehold townhouses. I'm not including condo townhouses in here. So freehold townhouses, only 43. The average price for last week was 1,203,000. So just over 1.2 mil for the average townhouse, 0.6 months of inventory. It's a very aggressive seller's market. Condos, everybody wants to talk about condos. So remember the, the headline I mentioned, I heard by, by this guy's on TV quite often, and, and uh, he's right so many times, but this one time he said, recently, condos are on fire. Where? So I'm looking at, are we talking about sales? Well, no, because the last few weeks, we've actually been lower than where we were the end of February and March. So we sold 440 condos, 40 of those sold at a million dollars or more, which is also slightly down from, from some of the, the better weeks that we've seen, but 40 still a good week. Average sold price, 695,000, down from the week before. And, and 695, you know, kind of if I look back at since, since February, March, April, it, it kind of looks, if, and I'm just kind of looking at the dots here on the screen, it kind of looks like the average sold price is around 700000 So six ninety five dollars would be at the, at the low end of the average over the last couple of months. Now, if we look back to December, January, wow, I mean, there's been a big change from, from six hundred. dollars we're now at almost seven hundred. dollars Prices have gone up for the average sold price of a condo by 100000 but, but we're, I wouldn't call this on fire because they're not continuing to go up. They've been pretty steady for the last two months. Compared to last year, let's not. It, it just doesn't make sense. And, and when we're talking about the condo market specifically, it was slightly after this time that we really started to see the, the mass exodus out of condos and a ton of inventory coming onto the market. So it's difficult to compare to last year, I mean, how, how could you compare? 14 sold at a million dollars or more. This year, 40 sold at a million dollars or more. Just that alone, what, what, it, there's such an imbalance, it doesn't make sense to do that. When we look at sales compared to last year, well, we can't, we're, we're way higher than we were last year, not because of the market, but because of the, the health crisis that we were in last year. Of the 440, 65% sold at list price or more. Now, it was 65% the previous week. Before that, it was 70, 72%, 68, 73. When we go back over here, we're at 40% to 60, 70%. There's a difference, but 
I don't know if you're gonna or you're gonna feel much of a difference from 70% to 65. It's something, but it's not groundbreaking. So condo prices right now are pretty steady, and the the action and the activity with the condos is pretty steady right now. Looking at listings, listings came down a little bit from last week where we listed 770 condos last week. The active listings is 1,794,000, which takes us to a 0.9 months of inventory. There's less than one month of inventory for the condos. Average sold price came down slightly. And if you kind of look at where months of inventory has been the last couple of months, will help understand why prices really have been a bit plateaued because months of inventory hasn't moved. Price just cannot keep going up and, and it's plateaued there. So as far as the summary goes, months of inventory detached is sitting at 0.9, semis is sitting at 0.5, half a month of inventory. That has not changed from the previous week. Towns, months of inventory came down slightly to 0.6 months of inventory and condos came down slightly to 0.9 months of inventory. It's very much a seller's market. It's plateaued a little bit in, in, all, in all the different home types, kind of given the impression that things have calmed down a little bit. I'm reluctant to, word, to use the word lull because it kind of, people jump on that. Oh, it's, 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 it's a little bit calmer. There's a bit of a, it's more plateaued but still very much prices are high and it is a seller's market. Thanks for watching. You know, because of this information and so much misinformation that's out there, it's so important that you're working with a good, strong realtor that can understand the real numbers and can guide you properly. My name is Santos Sessa with 3Max Premier. If I can be of any service, please give me a call. Have a great day.